Good evening. Our collective sense of security was shattered again today by terror, this time inside an Orlando nightclub. 50 people are dead, so many that authorities are resorting to posting their names on a website, a site still overwhelmed tonight as people try to account for friends and loved ones. The shooting massacre inside the Pulse nightclub, popular in Orlando's gay community, ranks as the single deadliest shooting attack in American history. More than 50 others were wounded. NBC News has learned the killer, a 29-year-old man named Omar Mateen, and had previously been investigated by the FBI and pledged his allegiance to the leader of ISIS just before launching his attack. Some victims were cut down where they stood or as they ran, as others hid or escaped through a courtyard, and still others awaited what would be a dramatic rescue by SWAT teams, which killed the attacker in a harrowing gun battle. President Obama this afternoon calling it both an act of terror and an act of hate. Our team is on the ground and has been working a number of angles to this still developing story. Let's start with the hours of terror and NBC's Gabe Gutierrez. Gabe? Lester, it started as a Saturday night celebration, but it quickly turned into a horrifying act of terror. Bystanders and first responders rushing to help the victims before 11 officers rushed in and took down the gunman. Oh my God, people are getting shot, dude. Get out of here. Oh my God, dude. This guy's firing off shots. At 2.02 a.m., gunfire tears through the music in the crowded club, packed with more than 300 people. I thought I was going to die. Like, I didn't know if I was going to come out alive. At 2.09, the club posts a chilling message on Facebook. Everyone get out of Pulse and keep running. A uniformed police officer working security confronts the shooter, now identified as Omar Mateen, who retreats further into the club, taking hostages. A witness texts his mother that he's taking cover in the restroom, but fears the gunman will soon come inside. At 3 a.m., bomb squad and hazmat teams call to the scene. I have a ballistic vest here for any of our individuals that are entering the red zone. A massive police response as hostage negotiators try to make contact. We have one here with multiple units on scene. For the next three hours, frantic confusion. Potential this woman desperately waits there. to hear from her son. So I don't know if he's still in the club, if he's incapacitated, if he's dead, or if he's being worked on here at the hospital. So many injured first responders run out of ambulances, forced to transport some of the wounded in police pickup trucks. Christopher Hansen in the middle of the carnage. Everybody was um, doing their thing, dancing, drinking, and then you hear just bang, 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 and it's continuous. So at first we thought it, was, it sounds like it sounded like the music, and then after that, it you just I looked over and I saw bodies falling, people screaming. Around 5 a.m., police use a controlled explosion to distract the gunman. Authorities plow into the club with an armored vehicle. A SWAT team rushing in to rescue hostages, killing the gunman in a firefight. One officer injured, shot in the head, but saved by his Kevlar helmet. The scale of the horrifying scene growing by the minute. In the team, we now have our large MCI unit, 250 patients. Initial reports estimate about 20 people are killed, but by mid-morning comes this stunning announcement. We have cleared the building. And it is with great sadness that I share we have not 20 but 50 casualties. The deadliest mass shooting ever in the U.S. They were beautiful people and they didn't deserve that. And what the mayor of Orlando is calling the city's darkest day. This is still an active scene and authorities have just finished processing it for explosives and the governor has just declared a state of emergency here in Orlando, Lester. The FBI now heading up the investigation. A lot of sadness in the city, Gabe. Thank you very much.